Hi, my name is Alex Ramey. I'm a professional DJ and MC. One of the harder parts of planning your guys' wedding is how long is my reception going to be? Some venues have a time that you need to be out by, judging how long events happen. It's really hard to planning a wedding. So I came up with a list of all the different events and about how long they take to perform each event depending on the different weddings. One of the more important events, I think, is the cocktail hour. And usually what this does is allows the guests go from the ceremony site to the reception. This also lets the bride and groom have some alone time, sign the marriage license, and finish up any pictures. This is also the time where they might be switching over the room. If the ceremony and the reception site is at the same place, sometimes they have to move chairs from the ceremony site into the reception, they have to move tables around. This gives the wedding coordinator, the venue, and myself as the DJ to make any adjustments as we go from the ceremony to the reception. At my particular weddings, I have a completely different setup for the ceremony and the reception. So as your guests transition over to the reception site, I have background music going for cocktail and hors d'oeuvres. And then after everybody's gotten over there, then I'll go over to the ceremony site and start breaking down my other equipment. Cocktail hour is usually between 15 minutes to an hour. And it all depends on when you guys finish up your pictures, when dinner is ready, and when you guys are ready to do the grand entrance. So what determines what time it is to do the grand entrance? Usually we need to have the dinner ready to go. You guys need to be done signing your marriage license and done with pictures. When these events come together and your photographer is ready, we'll do the grand entrance. And what we're doing is we're formally bringing you back into your party under your new last name. Well, we're doing the grand entrance, I'm gonna have somebody getting you guys dinner. So when we bring you in, you go directly to your seat and you guys can start eating dinner because after that, all of your guests are gonna wanna talk to you. Now, if everything goes smoothly, dinner lasts anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour long. During dinner, this is where I like to make any announcements. If you guys have a photo booth, if anybody hasn't signed the guest book, anything else that's going on where people need to know some important details of what's happened during the night that you guys are like. This is where I have everybody's attention. They're sitting down eating. And so I'll give good detailed directions of some of the events that are gonna be happening later in on the night. As people start finishing up, I let them know that we'll be moving into the toast and the speeches and when to get champagne or if the catering company is gonna bring around drinks for everybody to toast to. Craig, you're looking good, man. But uh, Carly, you look a lot better. It's all right. I'm Craig, I'm the groom. Um, I just wanted to take a second and just thank everybody for coming out today. Um, it took a lot of people coming from all different areas to make this whole day happen. Uh, there's a lot of people in this setup, a lot of people in the preparation, and. A lot of people the day of that made this day happen so uh, we just wanted to take a second and thank everybody and uh, I guess cheers you guys too. <laughs> now when it comes to speeches and toasts this can be something that lasts for 10 minutes or it can go on for an hour. It just depends on the people are speaking, how long the toasts are, and how many people are going to speak during the speeches. I tell my bride and groom to find out at the rehearsal who all is going to give a speech and about how long it is. At the very end of the speeches, the bride and groom are usually the last one to say something. This gives the bride and groom an opportunity to thank their guests for coming. Once you guys are done speaking, this gives me the cue to go into the cutting of the cake, followed by the first dance. So while the speeches are going on, I will run over to the cake table and make sure that you have everything. Make sure that there's a knife there, the silverware, the plates for you guys to do the cutting of the cake. Because when I announce an event, I want to make sure that it's executed. There's nothing worse than me saying, hey, it's time for the cutting of the cake and the silverware and stuff's not over there ready for you to execute this event. And this kind of helps my events and my weddings flow smoothly, making sure when I make certain announcements that things are ready to be executed. So when it comes to the special dances, we always start with the first dance with the bridegroom. 
From there, we'll go to the father-daughter dance and the mother-son dance. I understand sometimes people have step-parents, their mother or dad has passed away. So in my consultation meetings, I suggest if you guys have a brother, an aunt, an uncle, this is a good time to dance with them. Also, if you have step-parents, we can play two songs, or halfway in between the song, you guys switch parents. So we can do different combinations depending on what suits you guys best. So the wedding party dance usually was a cheesy event that happened at a wedding. This does not need to be a cheesy event. What this is, is kind of the icebreaker for the dance floor. It's hard to get people out there in the beginning. So we can get the bride and groom and the wedding party out there, kind of breaks the ice and gets a kickstart to the dance party. And more people are advantageous to get up there and start dancing later in the night. And this also creates for an overall better dance party. So after about 30 minutes to an hour of dancing, also depending on what time the photographer is leaving, we will go into the bouquet and garter toss. And I tell people, if you're thinking about doing the bouquet and garter toss, put it on your timeline. And then as events go on, if you guys are running out of time or you guys decide that you guys don't wanna do the bouquet or garter toss, it's an event that's very easy to take off. When it comes to the length of the overall wedding package, it just depends on the client. I start my packages at five hours, and as we need time, it can be added in half an hour increments when the dance party starts. You guys just let me know how late you guys want me to stay, and we can add time as we see fitted. The very last event of the night is the last song. What this does is it can be either be a slow song or a fast sing-along, and this gets everybody on the dance floor one last time. And at the end of this song, I can thank my guests for having me, and then I can give you guys detailed directions, whether I need people to clean up, everybody to go out front for a sparkler send-off. So this gives me a chance to get everybody's attention and enjoy one last song. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know, or you can send me an email at info at djcutentertainment.com. Thank you.